Space Freighter 9, with bleep booster the captain and his crew helpless inside, rushed headlong towards the unknown danger. There were no familiar landmarks, only the empty void of unexplored space. Through the observation window, Bleep and Booster watched in terror. Was Space Freighter 9 about to vanish, like so many of the Myron space fleet? The captain gave some terse commands. We are being forced to land. The impact will be considerable. Prepare yourselves. They braced themselves against the guidance computer memory store. The captain looked grim. If the unknown power failed to ignite the retro rockets, they would all be smashed to bits. Miraculously, Space Freighter 9 made a perfect landing. <laughs> Guided by the same unknown force, the landing doors glided open. The captain and his crew gazed out cautiously. The landscape was strange and bleak. There was no sign of life or any growing things. At intervals rose towers of luminous metal, and more of the mysterious rays shone out from the tops of weird, spidery pylons. Suddenly, there was a familiar sight. In the shadow of one of the towers rested the missing Myron space freighters. They seemed to be trapped in a web of crisscross rays. Leap and Booster heaved a sigh of relief. Hooray! cried Booster. Let's go and rescue them. Stay where you are. Do not move from the freighter until I have made a reconnaissance. Beckoning his crew to follow him, the captain began to climb out, watched by Bleep and Booster. But suddenly... Helplessly and against their wills, the captain and crew found themselves drawn along the path of blinding white light. Bleep and Booster watched in frozen horror as the brave Myrons were pulled further and further away from the space freighter. The captain's voice came echoing faintly across the ghastly planet. Beware of the ray! Beware of the ray! Ah! The sky went dark. They were gone. Bleep and Booster were left in dreadful isolation. Somehow we must rescue them before they are lost forever. I know. Now the ray's gone. Let's see if we can fly the space freighter back to Myron. They ran towards the complicated control panel, and Booster found the mechanism to close the massive doors. He pushed as hard as he could, but it was useless. The control panel was completely immobilized. Tears streamed down Bleep's face. There is nothing more that we can do. Yes, there is, cried Booster. There's our space scooter. I bet that's still working. Sure enough, the little scooter was still where they'd left it under the ionic multiplier tubes. They dragged it out and tried the solar throttle switch. At once, the tiny jets came to life. There you are, Bleep, said Booster. We're not stuck on this planet forever. But the scooter has power for only one hour's flight. We will never be able to rescue my father and the crew. Of course we won't, said Booster. If you just say no to everything... As the boys argued, there was an odd crackling from the interplanetary communications transmitter. Emergency! Emergency! This is Space Breaker calling my run control. S O Bleep raised his arm, ready to shatter the loudspeaker. What did you do that for, Bleep? You must be mad. Your father was sending an SOS for help. It was a trick. That was not my father's voice. It was the giant brain imitating him. Well, the 
Brain knows that we're here now, so there's nothing for it. We'll have to take the scooter. As the boys opened the throttle, the tiny scooter rose from the doors of the freighter. They're after us. We must head for cover, Bleep. Bleep dived low to escape the rays and skimmed just above ground level into the shadow of the nearest tower. As the scooter hovered, Booster spotted a kind of porthole, and gazing through it, his eyes grew round with amazement. Far below them, they could make out the figures of the captain and the Myron crew. They were staring up at a glowing sphere, and out of it came a voice they recognised. It was the giant brain. <laughs> Thank you.